Welcome to Viv Unplugged. So glad that you could join us. And I know many of you are working as we are live, but the good news is you're watching the recorded version. So this is what we would like. If you're unable to make any of our live sessions, please email us at education at mckinder.com or DM us, Viv Unplugged, this is my question so that we may say hey cindy you uh your question was and we may answer and you'll be able to watch uh the replay and that way if you're working which i hope you are and being super successful you can catch us later on i'm thrilled to have with me max masano who is my wonderful team player my right hand guy and we're going to go into a very special presentation today and we're going to be exploring the seven reasons why you may not have the dream clientele that you desire. How does that sound, Max? Uh, that sounds amazing. So I've asked Max to put on his salon hat today, his salon owner hat. Max, you've been a, a salon owner for how many years? Gosh, uh, over 10. So you've so. had the experience of good experiences and challenging experiences along the way. Absolutely. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And is that not true for us all, guys? The fact that, you know, we have good days in managing ourselves and bad days in managing ourselves, and that, that applies to people. I think the hardest person to lead is ourself. So we're going to explore today as a very special thing uh, the seven reasons why you may not have your dream clientele. So let's look at that because we're going to dive in pretty deep as we go through. So let me just get my mouse to oblige. So we have this lovely little booklet. You'll be able to get a copy of this booklet at our uh, private page of uh, on Facebook, which is called Hair Dressers Create. So that's where you'll be able to join, if you haven't already joined, join our private group on Facebook, Hairdressers Create, where this information will be available to you. So why this booklet will change your business? In a world filled with information overload, it's hard to know the right path to reach your goals. Once you understand where you are going wrong with your routine behind the chair, only then can you be transformed and thus create the business you really deserve. Once you realize that your actions are not getting you the results you want, only then can you take control of your business. The key to any successful stylist is the ability to make educated choices. And I love that statement. Max, what does that mean to you? I mean, to, to me, it would be actually making intelligent choices and being put on a path to success so that you can you know, continue to move onward and upward. And a choice that's intelligent versus a knee-jerk reaction, an automatic pilot choice, we, I did it this way and I'm doing it this way again. You know, 95% of what we do is in the unconscious. Only 5% is a conscious thought. So what we did yesterday will be repeated today without any conscious thought. So when we're making important decisions about our career, we need to put that consciousness into it and start to really examine some important truths. So are you ready for this shocking truth? 97% of stylists say they are given, a, they give a consultation. 7% of clients say they receive a consultation. This is a shocking truth. It's worth repeating. 97% of stylists say they give a consultation. 7% of clients say they received a consultation. Max, does this surprise you? Uh, honestly, no. I myself have been guilty of, you know, doing the same as last time, right? And, you know, not actually going in each time and, you know, doing a check-in with my client. And I've heard other people that I work with do the same thing as well. 
it's really easy to get into the habit of, you know, just a retouch and a trim. Indeed. You're instead a... of... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Instead of actually asking the client, you know, what I have found is that statistics show that clients will leave a hairdresser, not because they didn't like the quality of work, but that they wanted a change and no one ever asked. Yes, absolutely. Your ability to bring in clients is the lifeblood of your business and the ticket to your freedom. After reading this booklet, you will be able to take the necessary actions to correct these mistakes. You will not ha have to worry about getting more clients, but only if you're willing to implement the steps and do what it takes. Are you ready? Are you really ready? Who I am and why listen to me? Well, uh, thank you for joining me today. Yes, I'm Vivian McKinder and I am in the business of transforming lives and I have been doing that for over 40 years. I have worked for the best of the best and it has been an amazing journey. I have trained top stylists, salons and companies around the world. I am the founder and the pioneer of an online educational program which is Head Designer TV and Vivian McKinder. We're actually celebrating our 17th year I've been very fortunate to be the North American Hairstyling uh, Awards honoree for Lifetime Achievement, former creative director for Vidal Sassoon's and Trevor Sorby, six times North American Hairstylist Awards winner, which is pretty cool, Intercoffee Visionary Award, uh, International I Irish Icon Award, um, IPP, the best commercial award for the international press. That was a really cool one. That was that was in London. That was really nice. And there's been lots of nice awards. Um, I'm the producer and director of the film series I'm Not Just a Hairdresser, and I made this film series many years ago to I uh, to film and celebrate some of the greatest hairdressers in the world. Um, yes, I have been an editorial stylist during my career, platform artist and a keynote speaker. I've been a blogger uh, and I'm a host of Viv's Hair Heroes webinar series and I'm a content provider for Bespoke TV. So I've been a busy girl. So that's who I am and this is why it's kind of nice to listen to somebody that's not just a one trick pony. Do you know any one trick ponies out there? But let's go back to the beginning. I struggled as a young stylist, lacking confidence and vision as I was fear-based, and that is so true. I found a few hairstyles that I liked and put them on everyone until one day I was so bored with the same old style that I said, it's time to reinvent myself, change, change, change. Max, do you relate to that, getting stuck? Absolutely, I, I think it's always easy for us to get into a routine, which quickly leads to getting stuck in a rut. Yeah, and there's comfort in routine, and I'm never going to deny the importance of that. But when it starts to not feel exciting anymore, when we lose our edge, we're, we, we learn and grow most when we're challenged. So some people run away from the challenge, but that means you're walking around only half of yourself. You're not pushing yourself, and I think that's so important. So the main reason you're going to love my training is that I have found a very simple way to teach style and suitability, how to communicate my vision and sell through my ideas. You will get very clear on the problems that have held you back when it comes to getting more clients, higher retention and referrals. Now this is true. In a world full of people over promising and under delivering, my goal is to prove to you that I know what I am talking about and if you apply my system then you can make a radical shift in your current routine behind your chair and get laser focused with your actions and build the clientele of your dreams. Do you ever feel overwhelmed thus le leading you to give up? Does that ever happen to you Max? Absolutely. I think that happens to just about everyone who works behind the chair. And when you felt like that, um, what's the consequence? What's the price you pay when you feel overwhelmed and you give up? What's the price? I would say I start to check out, you, you know, behind the chair. So I'm just kind of in uh, cruise control mode. Yes. And so I'm not really 
totally present in what I'm doing. I'm probably thinking about, oh, how am I going to pay the rent? I need to order a color. And, you know, sales are down. The, the typical sort of salon owner, or even if you were a suite owner, you're still thinking about the same thing because you're in charge of yourself as a business. And honestly, even as a commission stylist, I've done it yes. because you are your business. Absolutely. So it's, it's very easy to detach, if you will. So now let's get into the seven reasons why you don't have enough of the clients that you truly desire, that you want to have sitting in your chair. So the first one is listening. How many of these qualities do you show? Care? Do you really show that you care? Help, which means that you have a solution to the problem and trust. So let's dive deeper into that. When you really show that you care, it's your listening skills, it's the eye contact, it's your body language. You know what's wonderful to do? I challenge you to do this. Put your phone uh, at your station and video one of your consultations and then watch the video back with no sound. Then watch the video um, with uh, no visual, so you're just listening to the narrative and see if there's any annoying verbiage that you use that's really not productive. And then watch and listen. And just see if you are conveying confidence, if you're sharing, showing the caring. Because sometimes people do say, well, I do care. But you think, well, you didn't really show it, right? I sometimes say that to my husband. It's like, well, you're not showing it. He says, well, of course I care. Well, I need you to show it more. <laughs> How many of you can relate to that? You do? Help. Everyone who sits in our chair has a problem. And the important thing is that you are there to identify the problem, speak to the problem, solve the problem. And solving the problem means that what you're saying is going to work. And that's where trust is earned. You can't buy it. You earn it with every single person time and time again. And sometimes I've seen people fail when they have had too much confidence and something's come along and they didn't expect it. And I've seen people clearly fail when they didn't believe in themselves. So that, those are two areas to kind of be very mindful of as we go on this journey. So care, help and trust which are the cornerstones to build your vibrant clientele. How do you know the right questions to ask your clients? So sometimes there are awkward questions that we need to ask that we don't ask because they're awkward. So therefore, we're not really being as authentic as we could possibly be. A great consultation is a partnership with you and your clients. It's a wonderful time to discover your clients' likes and dislikes. I always design from the inside of the head before going to the total image. I have created an easy system to guide you and your clients on a roadmap to success. During my career, I have worked with stylists so focused on their technique that they did not listen to their clients' needs and wants. And while the technique may have been fabulous on the wrong person, it can look ugly. They forgot the human touch of care, help, and trust. Max, can you tell us a story that relates to this where you have seen it go maybe with one of your employees horribly wrong and uh, how you corrected it? Sure. I probably, I would say 20 years ago, took my first cutting class at Sassoon and I got really into the purity of technique. So I came back and I was giving everybody geometric haircuts, whether, basically whether they wanted them or not. <laughs> and my business partner was like, she was like, Max, you know, like you, you are, are really just putting all these like hard shapes on everybody. And I'm like, I know, I, I love it. This is what I want to do all day. And she goes, yeah, but some of your people are looking ugly. And it kind of stops me right in my tracks, you know? You know what, Max, I'm guilty of that too. I did exactly the same for quite a few years because I was a fashion victim. 
and uh, yeah, fashion is important, but when you get blindsided, it's, it's dangerous. Professional advice okay. is number two. The truth is that if you want to attract high quality clients, then you must charge high quality prices plus a high quality service. They all need to be in alignment. Your consultation should not only be inspiring, but highly educational. Training our clients on face shape design, suitability, discussing fashion, personality, and lifestyle. This is a totally different perspective in value when we move from being a groomer, how many inches are we cutting off today, versus being a style maker. The truth is that one of the biggest reasons stylists fail to build the clients they want is a lack of confidence and being a people pleaser, often doing the wrong hairstyle on the client. The truth is, if you are not positioning yourself as an expert, you will never be respected or achieve a six-figure income. I have seen time and time again stylists feel intimidated and frustrated by the client's attitude or hair texture and become uninspired and unmotivated. This always stems from a lack of knowledge and confidence. So instead of being a problem solver, they just see the client as the problem. Often this client does not come back. So when we look at this, Max, the biggest reasons that clients uh, do not believe and trust in us I believe that all goes back to the quality of the questions that we're asking so that we really discover where the client lives, the landscape of where they live. Can you give me an example, Max, of a time when you actually felt very intimidated by a client or possibly frustrated because either their hair texture or the color that wasn't quite working the way you wanted or maybe their personality was just so frustrating? And talk to me through that and how did you get out of that? Well, when I was a wee baby stylist, I graduated out of beauty school and went to go work for a pretty big hairdressing company. However, no one in the salon knew how to do anything with curly hair. So when anyone with curly hair walked into the door, all we all did was blow it out straight and flat iron it. It was like the look of terror, like cast across the salon floor. Everyone looked at each other because they were like, oh, who's she coming to? And it, it really wasn't until I worked next to somebody who had curly hair themselves that I sought out. And I pulled her aside. I was like, will you teach me how to do your hair? I'll shampoo it, I'll style it, I want to learn. So again, I was reaching for higher knowledge, and then I became the person that knew how to do curly hair in the <laughs> salon. And the same happened when I went to go work at a beauty school. No one, none of the, the teachers knew how to basically set and diffuse curly hair. So I walked in and looked like, you know, this miracle worker, <laughs> but it was only because I asked for help. Yeah, yeah, and that's so true. So when we get into this place, of course, that's why we do training. That's why, you know, it, it, that's why we we all invest in online learning. That's why we use mannequin heads to practice a technique. That's why this is a craft. You're, you're only as good as the last hairstyle that you did. And that's why when you get stuck, it's wiser to say to somebody, listen, what you're asking for is gorgeous. I may not be the hairdresser for you. I'd like to recommend. Or this is where I feel I'm comfortable working with your hair. These other things that you're requiring, again, I may not be that person. Or, but you've inspired me to be that person. So while I refer you to somebody else, I want you to come back to me in six months time when I've nailed it. You know, you, it, honesty is so powerful um, when you can face yourself and, and, and die to ego. I mean, that's what it always is, isn't it? It's dying to ego. So a great story, yeah. Max. I love that story. So here we have Max's gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And I, I celebrate the gorgeousness of them, but we're gonna do a point of difference here.
here on number three. What is your point of difference? Uh, do you get lost in the sea of sameness? So while these colors are absolutely stunning, when we see a thousand of them, a million of them, they start to lose their value. And the key is always having that little place where we can have that sense of originality. The truth is the market is so crowded. If your only difference is price, then it is a battle you will never win. If your only difference is price, then it is a battle you will never win. This expensive, gorgeous color is hard to come by with the integrity of the hair still intact. Why should clients come to you? What makes you different to any other stylist? Are you selling a luxury service and experience or are you selling just a trim. That's a very important thing. What is your mission statement? I challenge you to write that out right now. What is your mission statement? What do you do? If you heard a client speaking about you in some restaurant, what would you want to hear them say? I challenge you, write out a couple of lines. When I go to Max, I feel, I experience, what is that? When I go to Susie, what is it? Very powerful. Studies have shown that the number one reason a client leaves the salon is looking for something new. We must engage our clients. It's a journey of discovery, creating a total beauty image. Number four, technique. So Max already spoke about the challenges of doing a technique and getting so lost in the technique that we forget about the suitability. Do you know how to design to face shape? Do you know how to create or reduce volume in the hair? Do you have the confidence to do a big makeover or cut hair short for the right reason? Not, oh, it went out of control, it just ended up short. <laughs> Do you have the confidence in your color recommendations? Are you able to duplicate a look time and time again? Do you do one haircut per service or do you fiddle and fuss, fiddle and fuss, fiddle and fuss? That's always been me in the past. During my career, I have worked with stylists who totally miss looking at the big picture. They let the hair control them instead of controlling the hair often resulting in the cut going too short. Max, do you have any experiences to tell us about a time when you went too short and how you navigated out of that one? Oh my gosh. Um, I would probably say one out of every five of my haircuts would go too short. And there is no navigating out of it, really. You know, the client has to wear it. But what I will say is when I began uh, working for you and we started doing these diagrams, that was like additional training for me. And you guys, we have done these amazing animations that are peppered throughout our entire education portfolio now that actually show the hair standing out into space and collapsing. And Viv, I know you can speak to this, the, the learn we had by actually mapping something out in two dimensions before putting it onto a head in three dimensions was so enlightening. Indeed it was. And I think that it's so easy to rush and a rush decision can have consequences that you can't backtrack out of. Never recommend something you know that you don't have the confidence to do. Be a lifelong learner. That is absolutely critical in all that you do. And understand the techniques. And I know the stopping, the stepping back, the looking into the mirror, designing from the client's perspective is where you control doing a little snip, looking, working with the hair, playing with the hair, doing a little snip, looking, working with the hair, playing with the hair. When you watch me work, I stop so much and look and look, is this working? Is this working before I move on? Otherwise, I would be designing with blinders and you do have to have a plan before you work the plan. These are all things that are so important, but technique doesn't mean anything if you don't understand who is wearing it and, and, and 
designing to the person that's sitting in your chair, not designing to a photograph, designing to who is there today. Number five is the courage to ask, and this is a tough one. Believe in your skills. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. And there's so many times, I know, I, I tend to actually be a shy person where I want to ask something, I think, oh, I better not ask, or I want to call them and I won't, I won't do it. And I have to remind myself over and over again, it's like this voice that says, well, if you don't ask, the answer is no. Ask. What's the worst that could happen? How hard is a no? Okay. So the no has a reason to it. And if you're a problem solver, you'll explore why there is the resistance and you'll find a way to beautifully navigate to a yes if that's the right thing to do. So the question is, do you ask for referrals from your raving fans? That's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Because you're asking somebody to, to support you. Uh, while Instagram is wonderful for building your brand and following, if, the, if we negate the human touch, if we do that, if we negate the value of looking in somebody's eyes, connecting with them, that experience, because we are selling experience as well as a service, the human touch is so important. You and your clients will never be happy or fulfilled. Remember, the consultation is the gatekeeper to your creative and financial success. Money is wonderful, but it's never enough. How many of you know rich people who are miserable? The creative reward, the sense of serving somebody and helping them, the sense of transforming somebody's, how someone feels about themselves, that is worth a million dollars. The money, of course, is incredibly, incredibly important, but never negate the creative process as well. For you, Max, asking the awkward question, what for you is a question um, that is, you're, you're nervous to ask of a client? I believe that uh, the one that tends to give me the most trepidation is when I bring up the budget, especially when doing these, you know, multi-hour, time-consuming hair color transformations. That, that's always been kind of a, a hard thing to ask because you don't, know, it's probably because of my own issues with money, to be honest. It's like I'm projecting on my client. But what helped get me over that is in a class, someone said to me, never assume you know what somebody's budget is. You have to know what you want and ask for it. You say it's gonna be this much, it's gonna be this much. And ever since I adopted that policy, you know, I haven't really had a problem with that anymore. That's wonderful, I love that, I love that, that's, that's powerful. In our consultation form, which is part of our training, uh, we uh, go in great detail over the awkward questions because the awkward questions are the tricky ones that they are um, how important is budget to you somewhat important very important not important uh, when you're looking at how frequently they can come into the salon you know is it every four weeks is it every four months you know what is that certain questions that you need to know about their personality and lifestyle it's hard to ask a woman how sexy she wants to be, but in a written form, it's much easier to ask in the form, would you like to look sensual, girly, cute? What is that, glamorous? That's easy to answer, written down, but verbally, it's a very tricky one to ask. Mm -hmm. So there are questions that are awkward to ask, and rightly so, but when they're written down and your client just fills out an intake form, um, they're, they're a fascinating time to discover. Then you have solid information that you can respond to. And I've used the consultation form that I use for about, about eight years. Uh, so all the years before that, I was like digging for gold. And I would use my intuition, I would um, use my experience, etc., etc. But it wasn't until I did the form that life started to change because I got consistency. And I realized some of these things that I would like to or assume like Max, you know, how can I assume to know how much money you want to spend? How can I assume to know 
uh, what is in your heart. I can't. I have to ask elegant questions to discover that so that I have something to work with. And that's the difference between a groomer and an image maker. And that for me is very, very powerful. I, can I just add something to the last one? Please, too? please. Uh, another, another question that a lot of people I found are afraid to ask is to ask the client if they're open for a big transformation. They, again, or we, because I'm guilty of it too, just assume, you know, that they want something that's in our comfort zone as opposed to always being willing to present them with the opportunity to change. And I think that is very powerful and it's all overlooked. Brilliant statement. Brilliant. I 100% agree, Max. Thank you for that share. Number six, limiting statements. Gosh, we all have them. If we listen to our language, there's so much power in a word. Watch the ifs, the buts, the you knows, whatevers, because they are uh, energy stealers. They have no value and they show uh, a lack of confidence. It's more powerful to be silent and then make your statement. Make your statement and be silent. There is power in the silence. So therefore, what are you saying to yourself and what are you saying to the clients? Find your voice and stop listening to the little voice of limitation. The truth is, what has held you back up until now are your beliefs around your possibility that, you aren't, e that aren't even yours. You have borrowed them from someone else. The question is, are you ready to, to let go of them now and take your business and life in a completely different level? That's powerful. Are you ready to let go to move on? Are you giving away your power by being a people pleaser? Are you missing out on, on opportunities? I hear stylists and colorists say, I don't. Max, fill in the blanks. Do perm, do men's cut, don't do short hair. I don't, I don't paint hair. I mean, insert your most hated service in the blank. Yes. The thing is that there are opportunities there. You know, sometimes I, okay, I'll give you a very good example. When I was at Sassoon's, I was trained to be a precision hair cutter and that was how I was programmed, like a little robot to do precision work and I will be eternally grateful for everything I learned at Sassoon's and I still fly the Sassoon flag because I think it's amazing discipline and beautiful work. When I left Sassoon's and joined Trevor Sorby, he was also an ex-Sassoon uh, artistic director, but he'd evolved, he'd moved on. He'd moved on into the art of dressing hair. He'd moved on into all these different other areas within our business. And he did, he used the razor. He was a former barber. So he understood the artfulness of the razor. So he started to do these sexy haircuts. And I tried to copy with my scissors, do Vivian Precise. And I, mine were all neat and tidy. And Trevor's were all soft and sexy. And the more I would try and undo the work with my scissors, they just got tighter and tighter. And he said to me one day, you've got to use the razor. And I went, oh no, I've never used the razor. S snob. You see, that's closing my, myself to opportunities. That's, that's limiting my thinking. Um, and I said, no, I don't think I can. He said, well, let me show you. I thought, oh, dear, really? And I struggled, I felt awkward. And so this is, do you relate to this? You're really good at something, really, really, really good at something. And now you go into a different area of our craft and you're really not good at it. And, you know, the first attempt at doing something, you'll probably fail, right? But when you practice it and practice it the right way with a great mentor or someone who's got a track record, then you're going to be successful. So it's allow yourself to go through the awkwardness, allow yourself to go through the learning curve. And that's where the magic is. So watch for the I don'ts and the things that steal your energy and the possibility of stepping into greatness. So the truth is that no amount of information will ever allow you to see what is possible for you unless your belief systems support it fully. You do not get what you want, you get what you believe. That is so powerful and worth saying again. 
you do not get what you want you get what you believe and I've always said that and I'm still oh gosh you know we all have blind spots and that definitely is one of my blind spots that I'll be saying something not realizing I'm not believing in it and have to constantly check that you believe what is true because of who you spend your time with and the education and experiences that you've had the more time you spend with people that have the results you want the more you will believe it's possible for you to success is infectious how do you relate to that max i would say just as i said you know success is infectious and you know, to take what you were saying earlier a step further, you know, failure or fail can be broken into an acronym first attempt in learning. And I can speak personally, I was another non-razor snob and super uncomfortable in our first virtual workshop, sweating, shaking, you know, really uptight and as I've worked and had you mentor me through it I really have fallen in love with this tool and I can do things with it that I couldn't do with the scissors and it's just opening up my skill set and you know whereas before I wasn't even I don't do razor cuts was what I said I only use the scissors and it was a very narrow-minded approach, I think. And, yeah. I, and I didn't even realize I was doing it. Yeah, that's so true. How have your clients been responding to Annie? Uh, my clients are so excited. Um, and my business has tripled. It's incredible. Wow. They, they don't quite know <laughs> who I am. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. they respond positive like wow you look great you've really changed you're what's going on <laughs> so annie tripled her her income and it was amazing uh so Annie had anxiety around meeting new guests. During our training, we discovered that Annie did not have a consultation system that she could trust and believe. I took Annie through my course and within a few weeks, Annie's clients and business was transformed. After six weeks, Annie had increased her confidence and tripled her sales. That was such a great story. I know for you, Max, you have been through who is sitting in your chair and it's quite unique as a product because in, in, in our product, we have something that's so hard to teach. Face shape, mm -hmm. developing a great sense of style, the consultation, understanding when it's right and when it's wrong, understanding how to see beyond the trends and be a trendsetter versus just a little sheep following along. Very powerful course in communication skills and connecting skills. How did it change your world, Max? I would say, well, number one, when I really started to look at the client's face and see who was there and, and what their bone structure looked like, I could then, number one, tell somebody what their face shape was, point out proportions and what I would do is I would actually start to like move the hair. Like if I thought they needed a fringe, I would like drape it across their forehead and I'd be like, see the difference, you know, when you have the hair positioned here or, you know, on the cheekbone or on the jawline or wherever it would be. And even if I wasn't totally sure they were gonna buy into it, one for one, whenever I went into that format and started talking about it, people, the, the guests would say, nobody has ever talked to me about my face shape or where my hair should sit and why. And, you know, always done in a very kind way. You never want to say, well, you got a fat face, so we need to, like, close it out. But you know, just really pulling the hair off their face, 
saying, looking at it, you know, saying, I see that you're a little round here, so, you know, I'd like to just put some hair here to help close that off and create the, a look of symmetry. And no one's ever, no one's ever told me no. Wow, that's powerful. So the power of lifelong learning is our seven point. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance. And the person who I heard that from was Vidal Sassoon. And he was one of uh, speaking about being a lifelong learner, being a knowledge seeker. So the challenge to you is uh, to be that knowledge seeker. And I thank you for being with us today. If you think education is expensive, you know, look at the return on that investment, what you put into it. If you don't pay, then there is no, you're not present. Free has very little value. When you invest, that's where the value is because you take it seriously. And in a free economy of so much education out there that's free, it's cheapened. And you know what? Someone had to spend a lot of money to make that education and they're giving it away for free. Uh, to me, the education and the experiences I've had are, are incredibly invaluable. And if I can help accelerate your learning curve, it took me 40 years to find out some of this stuff. You're learning it in an accelerated way, which is so powerful. So you cannot give what you do not have. So how can you make a recommendation to your clients if you have a limited repertoire? Not one thing fits all. This is not a franchise that we're just sticking the same franchise cookie cutter hairdo on everybody. More today than ever before, people want to make an individual statement about who they are. They have a voice today. They have social media to be significant. They don't need to hide in the crowd. They can step out and be very visible. So being teachable and always hungry to learn have been the keys to my long career success, creatively and financially. I know the importance to learn from the best of the best, to invest in myself. I know that knowledge is power that transforms the ordinary to extraordinary. True confidence comes from knowledge. There are ups and downs, but whatever happens, you have to trust and believe in yourself. You, are you ready to make some changes? I hope so. I have discovered over the years, if you want amazing results, then hang out with people or a person in your life who has achieved exactly what you want and spend as much time with them and adopt their thinking patterns. If you lack personal belief, then you must borrow somebody else's until you start seeing it as a possibility in your life. So I thank you for your time today. I hope this has inspired you to make some changes in your business. And if you're ready to learn more, then click out, click that button and we will share with you the next tier of where we're going to go. And for our dear members here at Viv Unplugged, we will make sure that you have our consultation form that is part of this so that you can now start to look at these little pieces. And if you want even more after you looked at the consultation form, then we will invite you to join us on who is sitting in your chair. A very, very powerful course and I promise you there's something magical about when you have the confidence, the quiet confidence, not the ego confidence, the quiet confidence to say, that's going to look beautiful on you. I got you. I Trust in me. Lean into my arms. I'm not going to misguide you. I'm not going to misdirect you. Trust in the process because I have heard, I have listened to every single thing you said. I've taken that all into consideration and I'm not going to over promise and under deliver, I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to over deliver on my promise to you. You're going to be even more wowed. Then you earn the money that you're asking. Then you've earned that respect. And when you deliver because you've got strong technique, you understand how to put the right look on the right person, you know how to ask the right questions, that confidence is, is quiet. It's not big and boastful, it's quiet. And there's power in that softness. There's power as you engage and connect. That's where the power is. The power to build your dream clients, 
and the dream lifestyle that you want is in how you design it and design it with that intentionality and when you when the client can see and feel that you genuinely care about their success and you can deliver on the things we're speaking about here you stay true to the seven points we captured today you will enjoy even greater success than you currently have Max thank you so much for being with us today thank you for having me Viv and any uh, words of advice or some passing note from yourself please just to reiterate what you you said you know you you have to pay in order to play and you got to have some skin in the game to make it count so click that button make a change in your life you won't regret it great thank you so much for being with me today thank you for your words of wisdom we appreciate it anytime <laughs> thank you so much guys thank you for joining us take care and we'll see you next time for Viv Unplugged. Thank you.